Okay, let's get started. I'd like to call this meeting of the Corville City Council to order April 14th, 2020. Roll call. Councilmember Foster. Present. Gross. Here. Gill. Present. Dodds. Here. Goodrich. Lori, I think you were muted, but that's okay. We know you're there. Um, so all council members are present uh, in, in, in keeping with social distancing. Most of us are from our homes, um, as is the city manager or city administrator, I'm sorry, city attorney, and several other city staff members that will be have an opportunity to speak with us a little later in the agenda. Um, I would now entertain a motion to approve the agenda with the deletion of items A, a and B. So move. Moved by Gill, seconded by? Second. By Jill, I believe. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, the agenda is approved. Uh, item four, there's two proclamations this evening. The first one has to do with li National Library Week. I'd like to read. City of Corvo proclamation, whereas today's libraries are less about what they have on the shelves and more about what they can do with and for communities, whether, whether it is through virtual services or in-person visits. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted and treasured institutions for people of all ages, interests, and backgrounds. Whereas libraries of all types are at the heart of their cities, towns, schools, and campuses. And whereas libraries offer members of the community opportunities to explore new passions through technology, programs, and services. And whereas libraries and librarians work to create an equitable, equitable society by providing free access to accurate information to all people. And whereas in time of crisis, libraries play a critical role in continuing to support their communities where they need them most. And whereas libraries are a resource for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status by offering services and educational programming that transform lives and strengthen communities. And whereas libraries, librarians, library workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, John A. Lundell, Mayor of the City of Corville, proclaim April 19th through the 25th, 2020, as National Library Week. And further, I encourage all residents to visit the Corville Public Library's website or call the library to access resources and services remotely. Because of you, libraries transform. Signed and sealed this 10th day of April 2018, John A. Lundell. And we have our library director, Allison Ames Goldstead, here to virtually receive this proclamation. Would you like to say a few words, Allison? Sure. Thank you so much. And I want to thank the council for your support of the library all these years. Um, we have great support in the community and really um, work hard to, to provide um, those services, um, even, even under the most extreme circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a small core of staff at the library, even uh, during this closure from 10 to six each day. We have rotating teams, very small teams as um, do most of the events to cover um, library operations. Um, we offer curbside pickup two times a day, two hours each day. And we've been doing um, a great deal of that. Uh, since we closed on the 17th, we have served, uh, I think we've had 738 pickups total through the 12th of April, but um, that accounts for almost 7,000 items. And those are hard copy items that have gone out. Um, and of course our e-media um, access is, is um, you know, just skyrocketing. So people are accessing the library electronically and using the virtual collections. Um, but of course we have a lot of people in our community that don't have um, devices to be able to do that. So we're glad to be able to do a little bit of curbside pickup. Um, I just wanna thank the, the council for observing National Library Week and we'll be doing a lot of social media next week 
to celebrate. Um, so we're, we've got librarians there um, seven days a week answering emails and phone calls. So please reach out to us if you have any questions or need any library services. Thanks. Thank you, Allison, and, and thank you and, and your great staff as well. It, it's, it's something that makes Corville very proud is to have the excellent library that we have. Any comments from council members? Well, I'll just say as a library rep, I appreciate everything the library staff does. And on to the library, I've got my library cup yeah. tonight that I'm drinking tea out of. Uh, but uh, you're right, these are trying times and, and we appreciate everything that you and the staff are doing uh, to still provide services to our citizens during this time. And it's fun to see the Facebook um, children's story times too. So encourage people to check that out. Thank you. Just keep on, keep on, keeping on. You're doing a great job. Fantastic job. Thank you all so much. Okay, very good. Thank you, Allison. Um, my second proclamation has to do with Arbor Day. It's a annual tradition in Coralville. Um, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And as Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are, renew are renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Now therefore, I, John A. Lundell, Mayor of the City of Corville, proclaim April 27, 2020, as Arbor Day in the City of Corville. I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to suggest efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And further, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote a well-being of this and future generations. Signed this 14th day of April, 2020, John A. Lundell, Mayor. And I believe we have Sherry Proud, our Director of Parks and Recreation, to receive this uh, proclamation vir uh, virtually. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you for reading this. This is part of our Tree City USA um, responsibilities and this will be our 28th year in being named to Tree City USA. So um, thank you for doing that. Arbor Day, we celebrate Arbor Day here in Coralville not only just on one day but usually on several days through some field experiences with our local um, elementary and junior high school students. Um, this year we were not sure that those are going to happen directly in the same way but we're making plans for um, having possibly if we do get canceled out with our school groups, we would uh, are going to do some uh, plant a tree by appointment uh, type of signups. And so we'll be social distancing, but being able to have families come and plant a tree and still be able to um, put the trees in the ground that we um, got money for through the, the DNR's Trees for Kids grant. Super. That's great, Sherry. It, it's something that's... Uh needed these days with losing so many ash trees, anything we can do to replace those will, will be terrific. So thank you. Any other comments? That's great, Sherry. Sign me up. I love planting those trees. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, let's move on to item five, which are some comments. Um, Mr. Clerk, did we receive any um, comments uh, prior to the meeting? There's no one here for written, or no one here to uh, have comments, and there were no written comments. Okay. Having uh, no one present and having received none, we will move on then to item six, which is Lot 2, Dovetail Estates, Part 9. This is the second consideration of an ordinance that will rezone the this lot in Dovetail Estates um, to Commercial Planned Unit Development 2. Um, in order to build a 8,926 square foot single story commercial use building with two tenant spaces. 
Uh, Don? Um, ordinance number 2020-1002, an ordinance amending the Coralville Zoning Ordinance, the same being ordinance number 664 is previously amended, rezoning certain property located within the corporate limits of the city of Coralville, Johnson County, Iowa, and generally known as Lot 2, Dovetail Estates, Part 9, from CPUD 1, Commercial Plan Unit Development 1 District, to CPUD 2, Commercial Plan Unit Development 2 District, introduced for adoption, second consideration by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Okay. Uh, Tom, was that you first? Lori. Lori, okay, we'll give it to Lori. Okay, uh, seconded by Goodrich. Any discussion? Roll call. Gross. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Okay, the ordinance passes at second consideration, all ayes. Item seven is also a second consideration of an ordinance um, dealing with abandoned buildings. Um, the 2019 Iowa General Assembly passed a law requiring each city to codify uh, this into their, um, their code of ordinances. So this is a second reading. Don? Ordinance number 2020, uh, 1003, an ordinance regarding the applicability of chapter 657A of the Code of Iowa introduced for adoption second consideration by council member gross seconded by second second by foster um, any discussion roll call gill aye Dodds. aye Goodrich. aye foster aye gross wake up gross <laughs> Mitch. Thumbs up, Mitch. Hi. I got I'm freezing. <laughs> yeah, I keep freezing up. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, the ordinance passes at second consideration, all eyes. Moving on to item eight, we deleted A and B, but we still have C. And um, this is a resolution. He says A and B are out, and we still have C. C's on the other side. Are you with us, Don? Yes. Uh, resolution to fix a date for public hearing on a loan agreement in a principal amount not to exceed $1 million. Introduce for adoption, council member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gross. Um, I'll just note that this says the finances, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, uh, loan agreement will finance the green stormwater infrastructure improvements included in the East Second Avenue project. Um, it will involve the state revolving fund SRF uh, loan and forgiveness of a portion of the principal under the DNR grant. Um, the financing will be repaid through the stormwater fund and with a transfer of TIF revenues from the mall and highway six fund. And this public hearing will be on May 26, 2020. Any other discussion? Yes, um, this money would go towards um, the East 2nd Avenue project, and this will be a portion of the financing for the overall streets. On your next council meeting, we will have the action for the rest of the money that will go towards East 9th Avenue and East 2nd Street, East 2nd Avenue and 9th Street, excuse me. <laughs> Any other questions? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Foster? Aye. Gross? Aye. Gill? Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item nine is the union contract. This is an agreement for two years, which will run through June 30th of 2022. This allows the public works, parks and rec, and police union contracts to be negotiated at the same time for July 1st, 2022. Resolution approving an agreement with AFSCME Local 183 Council 61 representing Public Works, Parks and Recreation 
employees effective July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2022. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Ooh, a bunch there. Um, uh, Megan, did you, was that, was one of them you? No, she introduced it. Motion. Oh, she introduced, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Um, who, who was first? Pick one. Tom. Okay, Tom. Uh, seconded by Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch. Uh, is there any any uh, questions or discussion on this item? Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Gil. Aye. Dodd. Aye. A resolution passes all eyes. I'll just mention that, you know, when I'm in the council chambers, I can tell my left or my right ear which direction it's coming from and figure out who it is. But on the computer, it all comes straight at you. So it's a little harder to, to, to hear who comes in first. So I just deal with it. <laughs> okay, item 10 are various lots in the Summit Hills um, uh, edition. Uh, this is a project that um, another phase that we're doing with Blue Sky developers and Blaine Thomas, um, who will be purchasing a number of lots to develop into some affordable ho homes. And um, this is setting a public hearing, or oh, the public hearing was held, I'm sorry, on March 24th, 2020. Um, Kelly, you had, were you gonna add anything more to this? Um, yes, uh, Mayor. The uh, what we'd ask is for your approval of uh, the disposal of the lots. Um, we do intend to adjust the actual number of lots uh, after MMS has done a uh, kind of a survey with our Park and Rec Department in regards to uh, the community gardens area affects a couple of these and and where the streets are and the developer is willing to do that and so um, we just ask uh, for that um, the approval subject to that adjustment being made I do would report that the first three houses that uh, we worked with blue sky development on are all sold and I think one of them is close to if not having um, been moved in and they turned out really, really well. And so it's um, very exciting to see how quickly they sold and how nicely that they turned out. It's nice th that this is happening because those lots were always, they, they came into the city as non-conforming lots. And uh, it's nice that we were able to straighten them all out and get them, get them to the right size. So good job. And Kelly, oh. is Let's there, so the community gardens will stay. And I noticed that there's three different home styles that are being offered. Correct. Yeah, that was encouraging. There'll be a variety of um, different styles for people to choose from. Yeah, and- A nice uh, neighborhood. Right, it will turn out very nice. And one of the ways they get the, the price down is there's a lot of the, um, It'll be preset, you know, when you purchase a home, um, they'll know this is the carpet they get, this is the, those different items, and that's one of the ways that he drives down the cost is by bulk for some of the items. And so um, you'll have a different style to choose from, but some of the materials will be similar because of that. Okay, Don, uh, would you like to read the resolution, please? Resolution approving the disposal of an interest in real property, that property being various lots in the Summit Hills edition, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gross, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Any other discussion? Yeah, I would just, one other thing, I just remind um, everyone that these lots, or the, excuse me, these homes will be a little bit um, higher priced than the first three. Um, they'll be $230,000, and that's for a three-bedroom house and a two-car garage. Um, one of the reasons that these had to be slightly higher than the others was because uh, he has to put infrastructure in because not all the streets, water, and um, sewer are in, and so there will be some in investment in infrastructure into those lots. But they're within walking distance of 
Always. Northwest Junior High and Kirkwood Elementary. Yes, that, that's for sure. And I, uh, the other thing I was gonna remind folks that these will um, have to remain owner occupied for 20 years as well. Very good. Anything else? Roll call. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Hill. Aye. Dobb. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Thank you. Item 11, um, uh, A and B are both purchase agreements in the same neighborhood that we were just discussing. Um, it's two homes um, we're purchasing from members of the Nye family. Don, um, resolution A. Resolution approving a purchase agreement for 820 Hughes Street, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Foster. Any discussion? Yeah, and just a reminder that these are two existing houses that are in that area. Um, we do um, anticipate after purchasing the homes that we would demolish the houses that are, are existing there and then um, would have two, each each house sets on two lots. So we would have four more houses that would be built in the location of these two existing homes. Um, we have talked to Blue Sky Development and they would be willing to um, take both lots um, at no cost. Uh, they would, would not pay anything, but they would do all of the cleanup work. So they would demolish the homes and remove all the materials from the sites as well. Okay. Uh, nothing else? Roll call, please. Growth. Aye. Hill. Aye. Dodd. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Resolution passes all eyes. Item B is a similar purchase agreement for a home located at 824 Hughes Street. Resolution approving a purchase agreement for 824 Hughes Street, Coralville. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Dodd, seconded by. Second. Uh, seconded by Gross. Any discussion? Roll call. Hill. Aye. Dodd. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Okay, resolution passes all ayes. Moving on to item 12. Um, this is for lots one and two in the Bluff subdivision. This is just uh, basically a correction of, uh, of uh, the proper name of the developer in the agreement. Don. Resolution clarifying the grantees for lots one and two, the bluffs at Brown Deer, Coralville, Iowa. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Dodds. Any discussion? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Hill. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item 13 is the assignment amendment to lease. Uh, the, item A is the, um, the amendment to the lease of the property formerly occupied by Louis Wine Dive in the Iowa River Landing um, to a new uh, partnership that will open a new type of restaurant in this space. Resolution approving an assignment of lease from Louis Wine Dive, uh, Coralville to 901 IRL LLC. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gill. Any discussion? Um, yes, this, uh, they would be the new leasehold uh, tenant would be taking over the lease as is from Louis Wine Dive, so there'd be no change in the lease. They do intend to completely uh, remodel the whole facility, both inside and out. They will be doing work on the patio to enhance that area um, outside fire pits and um, outside um, different types of seating and then they will also do work on the inside of the restaurant as well. Great. Nothing else? Roll call please. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. 
Aye. Aye. Dodd. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item B um, is a similar assignment uh, amendment of, of a lease, but it's simply, uh, is this is for the Fuzzy Taco uh, restaurant, and it just is a reflection of the change in ownership of the, of the facility. Resolution approving an assignment amendment and release of guarantee of lease with Taco Dirty to Me LLC introduced for adoption by council member Gross, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Foster. Discussion. Oh, is that you, Jill? Name. Was that Jill? I'm sorry. That was Jill. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Second by Don. Don, can you repeat the name, please, of the company, the new company? <laughs> <laughs> Taco Dirty to Me LLC. Right, thank you, Don. He, this is, he's, he's got his poison going on over here, too. Yeah. <laughs> and who was second? <laughs> uh, that was uh, Dodds. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing else. Uh, roll call, please. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Gil. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Okay, resolution passes all ayes. Item 14 is the Iowa River Landing Joint Com Communications Conduit Agreement. This is a resolution of approved agreement with Mid American Energy Company that uh, allows them, them to share some space in an existing conduit, um, basically east of the Marriott Hotel. And then they're going to install some additional uh, linear, linear feet of conduit. Um, at their cost that we will be able to share from. So it's a mutually, mutually agreeable um, agreement. Don? Resolution approving an agreement with Mid-American Energy Company for a joint communication conduit in the Iowa River Landing, introduced for adoption by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Gross. Discussion? Roll call. Gross? Aye. Gill? Aye. Scott? Aye. Goodrich? Aye. Foster? Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Moving on to item 15, the Brown Deer Golf Club uh, Maintenance Coordinator Agreement. Um, this is an agreement to establish a contract employee uh, in the title of Golf Maintenance Coordinator. Um, it's similar to a previous position that we had. Uh, that was uh, working at Brown Deer. And Don, I'll let you read the resolution. Resolution approving that certain Brown Deer Golf Club um, maintenance coordinator agreement with Tom Palachek for the Brown Deer Golf Course. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Dodd, seconded by. Second. By, seconded by Foster. Discussion? I can comment on this if you'd like me to, Mayor. Sure, if you'd like. Sure. Um, so in the FY21 budget, we deleted the golf course superintendent position and created this golf course coordinator position. Um, it's more in line with what other courses um, have and, and their pay structure, as well as it puts um, this position underneath uh, the golf pro in a limited services agreement, just like the pro and the assistant pro where they have a base pay and we pay some um, some amounts to them for uh, health insurance and, and phone stipend, uh, much like we would um, our city employees, but it also allows a commission structure so that um, they're incentivized to, to get golfers on the course and to keep those carts um, running on the course, which makes the golfers happier and likes them, they like to come to our course. So it all ties back into getting more golfers out there. Well, that would be great. Any questions for Sherry? Roll call. Gil. Aye. Dobbs. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item 14 is uh, the Iowa River Landing um, Landscaping Enhancement Project number four. And this is for new trees and plants and the planters on the north side of East 9th Street, which will match the south side when those improvements are made uh, this summer with the East 9th Street reconstruction. 
And again, I believe Sherry is going to give us a, a bid report. Yeah. Um, on March 31st, we took um, bids for this project, and I'm um, working with um, Kappa Advisors on this project. And um, we had seven bidders, which we felt was a really great um, bid, a number of bids for us. Um, they ranged uh, pretty widely, and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. Sorry about that. But we would like to recommend um, to Landscape Solutions of Iowa at that bid of 31000 seven hundred ninety five and thirty four cents and we've worked um, with landscape structure solutions of Iowa on First Avenue most recently okay thank you Sherry uh, Don item B resolution resolution accepting bids and awarding a construction contract for the Iowa River landing north of East 9th Street landscape enhancement number four Introduced for adoption by Council Member Goodrich, seconded by. Second. Seconded Second. by Gill. Any discussion or questions? Roll call. Dodd. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Gill. Aye. Resolution passes all ayes. Item C is for the same project approving the contract and bond documents. Resolution approving the contract and bond documents for the Iowa River landing north of East 9th Street uh, landscape enhancement number four. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Foster, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Dodds. Any discussion? Roll call. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Gill. Aye. Dodds. Aye. Resolution passes all eyes. Item 17 is the Iowa Department of Transportation Amoco loan application. And this is an application for $90,000 for a five year loan at 0% interest uh, to be used as local match for one of our new 40 foot low floor replacement buses. Don? Resolution approving an application to the Iowa Department of Transportation for an Amoco loan. Introduced for adoption by Council Member Gross, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. Any questions, discussion? Uh, yeah. Taylor, could you talk about this a little? I, I can't hear. Uh, Vicki, um, would you like to oh, give us a little report? Hi. Yeah. Hi there. Um, this is something that the Iowa DOT offers to transit systems for their local match for vehicles. And given our Current situation with our uncertainty in transit affairs and ridership um, gives us an opportunity to pay for our local match and it can be funded up to five years was our request that we can pay off earlier at any given time. Okay. We'll answer your questions. Good job, Vicki. Yep. Okay, if nothing else, roll call, please. Foster. Aye. Girl. Aye. Gil. Aye. Bob. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Resolutions have passed all ayes. Item 18 is urban soil health uh, IQ in the Lower Iowa River Watershed Campaign. And this is an amendment to an existing project there where the DNR is willing to award us an additional $50,000. This project is in is a collaborative project, um, also with the cities of Iowa City and North Liberty. Um, Don, resolution approving amendment number one to contract number one nine, ESD WKB SKONR dash O O three, the Iowa Department of Natural Resources. <laughs> For raising the urban soil IQ in the Lower Iowa River watershed, introduced for adoption by Council Member Gill, seconded by. Second. Seconded by Goodrich. I didn't know we had a low IQ. <laughs> yeah. Virtual <yeah. laughs> classroom here. Huh? <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> no, roll Aye. call. Roll. Aye. Gill. Aye. Bob. Aye. Goodrich. Aye. Foster. Aye. Resolution passes all eyes. 
Item 19, I'd consider a motion to approve the consent calendar as presented or amended. Move to approve the consent, consent calendar, items A through S inclusive. Second. Moved by Gill, seconded by Dodds. Any discussion? Roll call. Dodds. Aye. Goodrich. Foster. Aye. Grove. Aye. Gill. Aye. Consent calendar is approved unanimously. Item 20 is city administrator's report. Yes, um, first of all, I would just like to remind folks that um, we're continuing to monitor the situation with social isolation and, and the recommended dates and all of that. And just ask that people be patient because um, with all that's coming with that, um, we just have to really make guesses and go at a um, time frame for weeks um, uh, at a time and we don't know whether when for example, recreation programs will be able to be started. We don't know when our facilities will be able to be reopened. Uh, we're just doing our best and monitoring what the um, governor and public health officials are recommending. And obviously I think at some point we'll have some, um, have to have some discussion with all of you in regards to um, how we um, go back into um, operations and what gets phased in at, at what time and hopefully um, we'll have some um, time here in the near future that we can have those discussions. Um, a couple of items of good news. Um, tomorrow, it's anticipated that um, LL Pelling will come in and do final grading on that um, temporary trail, the connection from I River Power Company up um, through our uh, park area um, in the Iowa River landing. And then the next week, they will come in and asphalt that trail. So that connection will be made. And as people are looking for new areas uh, to experience in their social isolation, I would suggest that they go down there and, um, and visit that location. Also, the um, at Rotary Camp Park, uh, the new shelter is completed there in conjunction with the new um, uh, the fireplace that was built last fall, the, the concrete floor is in. Um, it's a really very, very nice facility. And that was a joint effort between TACO, Take a Kid Outdoors, and um, Rotary Camp, along with some other, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> other donations from the community. So um, that's another location that people could go out and visit during these times of socialized social isolation. They can go out to Rotary Camp Park and visit and see um, the new facility that's been built there. Uh, the last thing I would just note is in your proclamation, Mayor, in regards to the library, you noted that um, they're different today. There's different services. And one of the things that I don't think anybody would have ever anticipated is that you would um, have the ability to go to the library for snacks that kids um, need and um, sometimes um, um, is a really important part of, of their day when they leave school during normal times. And so that's another um, service that our library provides that I think is a little un, um, different than it would have been in days past, but a, a very needed service as well. And that's with that, Mayor, that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Um, I'd just like to, you know, give a shout out to all of our city employees that continue to work under unusual circumstances. Um, the, today there was a, a serious fire on, on Northridge Avenue, Northridge Drive, I'm sorry. Uh, fortunately, I don't believe anybody was hurt. At least I didn't hear, hear of that, either residents or firefighters. But um, again, it, it's uh, uh, some things just can't stop. And, and our services have done a great job of hanging in there during these unusual times. Um, I've been on many, many uh, Zoom conferences and phone calls and everything else, emails with my colleagues and mayors across Iowa and across the country. And, um, you know, we're all in this together. We're all trying to learn from each other. And um, I'd say we're, we're handling it as well as, as any, any other ones that I've heard, heard from on these calls. Um, very proud of what we've done. Um, just <laughs> The, one of the concerns on the national scene is that the, uh, the large uh, uh, pa funding package that was passed by Congress and signed by President Trump um, calls, for, uh, 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 calls for 
the bill dollars to be distributed to states and cities of over 500,000. Unfortunately, there's no language in there for any funding for cities less than 500,000. Um, the, the theory is that, that you can go to your states and, and request them to help you, but um, that's, that's not necessarily a requirement. So um, we're still a little worried. Um, you know, it's a very small percentage of this country's population that actually live in cities over 500,000. The vast majority uh, is, in, is under that. So um, it is a correction that needs to be done there and there's a lot of movement in Congress to try and go back and, and address this, this significant issue. But we're staying on top of it. Um, so with that, I think I'll just pass it on to um, our city attorney, Don. What, what do you have for us tonight? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh... Some of you might not be aware, but I, I uh, had a little problem on uh, Palm Sunday. I, I spent in the emergency ward in the hospital. Um, and um, it was something that the doctors explained to me that through the years, I've become more and more big hearted and my heart's getting bigger, of course. And in so doing it needed more blood supply and the major artery that supplies my heart just wasn't sufficient to to fulfill its uh, its duties, so apparently this is a problem that was found in lawyers often. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they had to put a stint in, and uh, uh, today I got back from the doctor's uh, examination, and they said everything is just fine. So I guess I'm all right, and the heart's still in good size, and we're working all right. That's all, Kevin. I got nothing. Okay, thank you, Don. I'm glad to see you're you're looking well. I think I think it helped you a little bit. So, <laughs> love your heart. So, uh, committee and council members report re, uh, reports. Um, first one on my screen is Mitch. Oh gosh. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, yeah, Don. Uh, glad you're on a road to recovery. So, uh, congrats to that. And I'll just dovetail what you said, Mayor, about the city staff. I just. Uh, completely impressed each and every day with what they're doing, uh, given the circumstances that our city faces. I was actually uh, on my way to distribute lunch when I came across the fire. So it was right between actually our two homes. So mm. it was a uh, quite a sight to see that amount of personnel. And I guess I'll, I'll just do a quick plug. I didn't realize uh, about the 500,000 threshold for city aid. So I would hope Senators Ernst and Grassley, given they represent a state that I don't think has a city of 500,000 or more. They would strongly advocate for their the president to, uh, and, and their colleagues in the Senate to uh, come up with a better bill. Uh, I'm the library rep. We have a meeting tomorrow uh, night. Um, uh, is our library board trustee meeting? I'm not going to. Uh, you know, a lot of you know there's an article in the paper today. I'm not going to comment specifically on that because our uh, board of trustees will be um, getting that information and kind of discussing that for the first time. Uh, tomorrow but once that meeting happens tomorrow at our subsequent meeting i will report back to council on kind of what happened at the board of trustees meeting on that uh and that's all i have there thank you mitch uh jill uh thank you mayor i just wanted to wish everybody a happy belated easter um i'm sure this is the the first virtual easter that many of us have shared with our families um and in regards to the funding for cities under 500,000, I noticed in my email that the League of Cities does have a, an action item that they're wanting us to sign. So um, I've already done that with my Portal Council email and hopefully that if enough of us do that, that will help spur them along. Um, otherwise, I'm very proud of Coralville for staying home, staying safe, keep up the good work. Well put. Thank you, Jill. Uh, Tom, you're next on my screen up here. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just like to thank the city for all their hard work that they're doing. You know, that, that everything is still running fine. The services are running fine. The, the public uh, public safety is doing a great job. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask Sherry, since she's here, the playgrounds are off limits, right, Sherry? Are the playgrounds off limits? Yes, all the playgrounds are signed with a okay. playground closed by order of the governor, as well as um, caution tape wrapped around all the playgrounds. And then we have large, I think we have 12 large boards throughout the city 
um, talking about social distancing, ways to enjoy the park, but ways to still be safe. That's great. Thank you. And I, again, I'd like to thank the city for all their hard work. That's it. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Can I piggyback on a question Tom asked real quick to Sherry? I, yes, you can. Uh, Sherry, I had, I'm sorry. I had somebody ask me too. Uh, from Brown Deer, are from a social distancing standpoint, are we requiring one person per cart? We're requiring if they are not from the same household. If they're from the same household, they can share a cart. And okay. so I don't know if you saw the information last um, Sunday about how many um, almost, if I remember, a third mayor was it of our people that were golfing on that particular day, we're all from the same household. So we okay. are having a lot of people um, come out in family groups. That's good to know, because I think people drive by in Oakdale and see all these gatherings of people on uh, the greens or in the carts and aren't probably don't have that fact uh, to yeah. them. So I will pass that along for sure. They do get that information also on Facebook and, and on the Brown Deer website um, on large boards at the top of the hill before they get to the pro shop they get that information again on the door of the pro shop and told in person, you know, try to keep social distancing. And remember that people don't understand that when they're driving by and when they see it, right. um, we're trying our best to, to make sure everyone kind of stays spread out. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lori, you're now, you're next. Oh, my, my love and appreciation to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And Megan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, uh, a couple of things. I have um, an update from John Bowler at the Food Pantry. He wanted to share, uh, you know, some of the uh, work that they are doing there. They're continuing to see about 250 families a week. They have expanded their delivery program. That's become very popular in the last couple of weeks. Um, they do about 30 or 40 of those per week. And they are doing a lot to make sure that, you know, they are um, packaging the food safely and that they are maintaining that social distance and those safe practices as they package the food and uh, deliver the food to the clients. So uh, really grateful for all of the work that they continue to do. It's, it's uh, extremely important in these challenging times. I just wanted hey, to all Megan, they, yes they need extra volunteers for delivery or things like that do you know they yeah they, you know they're being pretty careful about not having too many folks in the pantry they have lost right. they have lost about 90 percent of their volunteers because okay. a lot of their volunteers are um older or you know they they might be individuals that uh you know have pre-existing conditions so they, you know, they are uh, always, you know, usually are always wanting to welcome a lot of volunteers, but they're being a little bit cautious right now just because they don't want to, um, uh, you know, spread anything or encourage too many people to, to leave their, their homes. But, you know, uh, there are always, you know, opportunities to help out as far as, you know, there might be some things that folks could do from home, so I would encourage you to contact John if you had any questions about that. Great. And, and they're also packing 100 packs of every Friday for Northwest to distribute to the school pickup, so they're doing a lot of great yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, I just wanted to continue to thank everybody, all of the city staff and all of the, all of the other essential workers in the community, and I wanted to also just Thank everybody that is staying home and that is taking these recommendations seriously. And, you know, I, I think that is that is really important because we don't have a mandatory stay-at-home order, and it, it really is incumbent on everybody to to do their part. Um, and just a, a couple of questions for Sherry on the the golf course. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the pro shop? So is the, is the, the pro shop is open or? Pro shop is open. All the merchandise is um, cordoned off by turning our stacks around and things. So you can't access our merchandise if you wanted to buy a hat or something and you could pick it out directly by just seeing it, we would do that. But otherwise we're not selling merchandise right now besides packaged balls and things like that. 
And then um, we only allow four, it, like if you come as a twosome, we'll allow two people in, but we only allow up to four people in to pay. So basically a group, one group at a time can come in, everyone else has to stand outside and, um, and we encourage them, they have signs about how to stand six feet apart. And then what about, I'm assuming the uh, restaurant and bar, they are not There's open. No dine-in, you, um, you can buy um, your beverages and snacks and then exit the building and go to your cart. Okay. All right, um, and again, kind of related to the, the parks and rec uh, component of the social distancing, I just would encourage everybody, I know there are a lot of signs up that give information, just you know, make sure when you're out on the trails, on the sidewalk, make sure that you are moving over or doing your best to move over. Um, whenever I see someone with a stroller coming, I always make a point of being the one to go on the other side. So just make sure that you're taking those things into consideration when, when you're out and about. It's great that there are so many people jogging and biking and walking their dogs, but just make sure that you know you are taking that time to, to spread out a little bit if you see someone coming. And that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. Uh, unless somebody has any final comments, we will uh, close this portion of the formal meeting. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Moved by Gil, seconded by? Second. By Goodrich. All in favor say aye. 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 Mayor, okay. I just remind everybody if you could stick with us, 